Okay, everybody got the paper that I gave out on related rates? And I got that, I want to look at that. Um, if I'm not going to write the problem sound or project them up here, uh, that you've got them on, on your, on your uh, in front of you there. So we'll just kind of go through these. Okay. Now, um, I notice uh, on the paper there, first thing is a procedure for um, steps for related rate problems that they give you from the text here. So let's kind of read through those real quick and um, and then we'll, this is, this is what we'll kind of follow just to work these problems. So number one says, read the problem carefully, making a sketch to organize the given information, identify the rates that are given and the rates, the rate that is to be determined. Okay, so read the problem carefully. If you need to make a sketch, make a sketch. Not always necessary like a sketch, but uh, you might need to some. And then identify rates. Okay, so remember, rates of change would be is like is what is is what a derivative is, right? So remember, a derivative is a rate of change. So how fast is the area changing? So that would be the 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 d derivative, the change in the area divided by the change in time. That's that would be the, the rate of change, or the volume or a link or whatever okay uh, write one or more equations that express the basic relationship among the variables so all these that we do i think just about we just have one equation and we it might be the area of a circle area equals pi r squared we start with that and then take the derivative and go from there um, introduce rates of change by differentiating the appropriate equation with respect to time. All right, so you've got some formula for whatever the, is going to work with the problem. Take the derivative of both sides with respect to time, okay? And this is where that notation, that dy dx notation that we use, that is where this will come in handy because we will always take the derivative with respect to time. So it will be whatever over dt is what we will do each time. Uh, so we do that to both sides. Substitute known values and solve for the desired quantity. So whatever it is, if we're looking for the, uh, the rate of change of the area, then we solve for dA dt. And then that's our answer, okay? Check that units are consistent and the answer is reasonable, okay? All right, so that's what we do. All right, so look at the first one on your paper there. All right, it says expanding square. All right, it says the size of a square increase in length at a rate of two meters per second. A, at what rate is the area of the square changing when the sides are 10 meters long? And then B, at, at what rate is the area of the square changing when the sides are 20 meters long, okay? So first, from reading the problem, what is a formula that we need to be able to do this? Okay, what does the problem talk about? What, what shape does it talk about? Square. A square. And then what else does it talk about? Uh, what, what about the square? It talks about the sides. The length. What about in, in A? What? Change by two meters per second or something. Okay, go, go down that, that A part. At what rate is the area? area. There you go. Area. So we got a square, we got area. So really the area of a square is what we're really looking at for this one, okay? So how do you find the area of a square? All right, back to jump back to eighth grade geometry, seventh grade, something. Area of a, circle, area of a square is what? Length times width, and the length and width is the same. So we could just say a side squared, maybe. One side squared. That's the area of a square. All right. So we, we want to know um, at what rate is the area of that square changing when the sides are a certain length. Okay. So again, you've got your formula. Take the derivative with respect to time of both sides. Okay. So I want to say d dt both sides. And that's what we do on all of these. We always take the derivative with respect to time. Okay? 
Now, right, think back to your implicit differentiation. Okay, if I take the derivative of A, what is the derivative of A? What's the derivative of, of a single variable? One, but then you got to multiply by the derivative of that inside, which is A, with respect to time. Right? So, the, so just like before when we had, we had something like this. Well, let's say we had X plus Y equals 2. We differentiated implicitly, remember? We said take the derivative with respect to X of both sides. So we said the derivative of X is 1. What is the derivative of Y though? 1, but times what? times dy dt, or dx, sorry, dy dx, right? We're doing the same thing here. If you take the derivative with respect to time of a, then that's going to be 1, but you've got to multiply by the derivative of the inside with respect to t, which is the derivative of a with respect to t, okay? So all your variables you would do that way over here, because you know, you're not going to have a variable of time in the problem, okay? S squared, what's the derivative of S squared? 2S, right? But then times the derivative of the inside, which would be DS dt. Okay? That's first. Alright, so get, get a formula, take the derivative with respect to time of both sides. Alright, now look at what the question tells us. Okay, the question tells us the sides of a square increase in length at a rate of two meters per second. All right, so anytime it says rate, what's it talking about? It's talking about a derivative every time it says rate. Okay? So the derivative with respect to time of the side lengths, which is ds dt, is two meters per second. Alright? So here I want to put two for ds dt I want to put two meters per second. Okay. The A part says at what rate is the area of the square? So what, what is the rate of the area changing with respect to time when the side length is 10 meters? So put 10 meters there and then just then you can find the area. Okay? The, the change in the area. Questions about that? Okay. Well, by straight across, 2 times 10 times 2 is 40. Notice the units, meters times meters, meters squared per second. We're talking about the change in area with respect to time. Area, what units is area in? Square units. Right. Square units per second. So. Last thing it says to make sure what we got makes sense, right, with our units. That does make sense in this area. Right, questions about that? B part, all you got to do is just change this number there, I think. Let's see. So B, what is the change in the area when, this, when the uh, sides are 20 meters? That would be 80 meters squared per second. Okay. So if you've got a square whose sides are increasing at the same amount, yet at the same speed, two meters per second, that area is getting bigger inside at a faster rate. So when you're at 10 meters, the area, the rate that the area is increasing is at 40 meters squared per second. At 20 meters, it's it's faster. 80 meters squared per second. Okay. Questions about that? Okay. Look we'll at the next one. All right. The next one says the area of a circle increases at a rate of one centimeter squared per second. How fast is the radius changing when the radius is two centimeters? How fast is the radius changing when the circumference is two centimeters? All right. So, what is our main formula on this one? Look at the first sentence. What's the main thing we're doing here? The area of a circle. 
All right. So that's that's where we're starting. Okay. How do you find the area of a circle? That's circumference. Close. All right. So, but what's so what's area? R squared. R squared. Okay. All right. So area equals pi r squared. Okay. All right, so I just start with that. That is our formula. Let's take the derivative with respect to time of both sides. Okay, so on the left, again, I've got the derivative with respect to time of area. Well, that's just going to be dA dt. So that's, that's how fast the area is changing with respect to time. On the right side, pi, notice that's just a constant, right? So I don't, I really don't have a product here. I just got the, the pi and then I got the r squared. So that'll be 2 pi r and then times the derivative, derivative of the inside, which is r, so times dr dt. So that is my formula, okay? Any questions about that? All right, the A part says, how fast is the radius changing when the radius is two centimeters? And then they told us in the problem, the area of the circle increases at a rate of one centimeter squared per second. So they told us this one, this time. They told us it was one square centimeter per second, okay? I got two, I've got pi. All right, so it wants to know how fast is the radius changing, all right? Which one of these stands for the radius changing? Change in radius with respect to time would be, so dr dt is what we're looking for in this one. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, when the radius is two centimeters, that's the A part there, so two centimeters, dr dt, okay? All right, so let's solve that for dr dt. So notice this is 4 pi centimeters. So let's divide by 4 pi centimeters. So I have 1 over 4 pi. Now notice my units. If I have centimeters squared per second and I divide by centimeters, what am I left with when I divide there? What is centimeters squared over centimeters? Just centimeters. Just centimeters, right? So and then seconds just stay on the bottom. So this would be centimeters per second dr dt. Now, the radius, uh, what, you, what the radius there is just a length, right? So the unit should make sense because I have centimeter, just plain centimeters per second, okay? I'm not doing area, not doing volume. So it's one dimensional. So one over four pi centimeters per second equals dr dt. Okay, any questions about that one? All right, uh, the B part on that one says how fast is the radius changing when the circumference is two centimeters, all right? Well, now we need the circumference formula. What is circumference? Two pi r. Two pi r. Two pi r, all right? That is circumference. That's the distance around the circle, all right? So how fast is it changing when the circumference is 2? So if I put a 2 right here for C, and I solve for R because R is what I've got in my, in my formula here, then I would get R is equal to 2 over 2 pi, which equals 1 over pi. So when the circumference is 2, the radius is 1 over pi. So now let's do the same thing. Let's just put 1 over pi right here and we can figure out what that is. So I would have, uh, so for the B part, uh, dA dt, well, let's, do what, let's leave that one centimeter squared per second, two pi, and then I have one over pi centimeters, dr dt, okay? And then, so here the pi will cancel. So let's divide by two, so that would be one half centimeters per second. 
way. So when the circumference is two centimeters, the rate of the, the radius is changing with respect to time is one half centimeter per second. Okay. Questions about that? Okay. Another one? All right. All right. Next one says the edges of a cube increases at a rate of two centimeters per second. How fast is the volume changing when the length of each edge is 50 centimeters? Okay. So what formula do we need for this one? Volume. All right. Of a what? Cube. Volume of a cube. That's it. Okay. So volume of a cube. How do you find the volume of a cube? You just cube aside. Cube aside. Length times width times height. Do all the length, all the sides the same length. So volume equals. I just used the x there. Volume equals x cubed. That's your formula for the volume of the cube. All right. So again, we're we know the rates of change, right? So take the derivative with respect to time of both sides. Huh? So this will be dv dt. This will be 3x squared dx dt. Okay. Questions so far? All right, plug in your values there. The edges of the cube increase at a rate of two centimeters per second. Where do I put in two centimeters per second? Dx dt. Dx dt. So three. Uh, so dx dt is two centimeters per second. Okay. And then it says, how fast is the volume changing when the length of each side is fifty centimeters? Where does fifty centimeters? About three, just in just right? Because that's the side length. We're looking for the change in the volume. So 50 centimeters. There you go. All right. Multiply. Three times 50 is one, uh, 150 times two. I'm sorry, 50 squared. 50 squared is what? 250 times three times two should be 15,000. Notice your units. You've got centimeters squared times centimeters. So what you what will the what will the unit be there? Centimeters squared times centimeters would be cubed. Cubed. And if we're talking about volume, volume is three dimensional, right? So your units should be cubed. So our units make sense. I think we do. We got it correct. Okay. Questions about that? Okay. All right, look at the next one. All right, so remember, figure out what formula we need. A circle has an initial radius of 50, of 50 feet when the radius begins decreasing at a rate of 2 feet per minute. What rate, uh, what is the rate of change of the area of the instant area? I'm sorry. What is the rate of change of the area at the instant the radius is 10 feet? So what is our formula we need for this? Area of a what? A circle. Area of a circle. Right. So we already know what that is. Area equals pi r squared. So that is our formula. Right. Take the derivative with respect to time of both sides. Again, what you what you know there. All right, so a circle has an initial radius of 50 feet. So where would that go? Right well, that's the radius, just feet, right? Not feet per second. So two pi 50 feet. All right, 
Then it says when the radius begins decreasing at a rate of two feet per minute. Okay? So two feet per minute, the radius decreasing, dr dt. Okay? Is decreasing. So let's make that to be a negative since since it is since the rate is going down. Okay? That one should be dA dt. Multiply those together. This will be negative 40 pi. And that will be square feet per minute. And that should be your answer there. Spherical balloon is inflated. And its volume increases at a rate of 15 inch cubic inches per minute. What is the rate of change of its radius when the radius is 10 inches? Okay? So what type of formula do we need for this one? So what shape are we talking about here? Okay, ball, sphere? Sphere, that's sphere, right? Spherical balloon, right? So sphere. Okay, so it's not a, it's a balloon that is round, okay? So, and we're talking about its volume, right? So you may remember the formula of the volume of a sphere. Probably not, but it is a popular one, okay? Now I remembers it? Okay. Uh, okay, well this is it. Volume equals four thirds pi r cubed is the volume of a cube, okay? All right, so we've got the formula there. Let's take the derivative with respect to time of both sides. All right, so this will be dv dt. On the right side, I need to use the power rule because the pi is just a constant. Four thirds is just a constant. So I would say three times four thirds, which gives me four pi, and then that'd be r squared times the r dt. Okay, so there's my point. Any questions about that? Okay, a spherical balloon is inflated and its volume increases at a rate of 15 cubic inches per minute. So where do I plug in 15 in cubic inches per minute? dvdt. Alright, so, so again, the volume's changing, so put that in for dvdt. So I have 15 cubic inches per minute. That's 4 pi. Alright, and it says, what is the rate of change of the radius? So that would be dr dt when the radius is 10 inches. So 10 inches goes in for just the plain lr. So I would have 10 inches squared the yard. Okay. Any questions at that point? Alright. Well notice right, for dr dt, I've got 10 squared, which is 100, times 4 is 400, so 400 pi. So this will be 15 divided by 400 pi. Notice my, uh, the, my uh, units here. Over here I've got cubic inches per minute. Here I've got inches squared. So the, the minutes stay on the bottom. If I divide by inches squared, I have inches cubed divided by inches squared. What should that give me? Just plain out inches which should make sense because I'm talking about just the radius. The radius is just a length. So the unit should be uh, just one inch. Okay. Now, 15 over 40 quarter, that will reduce, uh, that will be 3 over 80. So I've got 3 over 80 pi inches per minute. And then, um, you're doing this in my math lab, they may ask for a decimal approximation, so just put that in your calculator, and that is around, for this problem, 0 
zero, one, two inches per minute. All right, a little more complicated, maybe. All right, so an airliner passes over an airport at noon, traveling 500 miles per hour due west. At 1 p.m., another airliner passes over the same airport at, at, at the same elevation, traveling due north at 550 miles per hour. Assuming both airliners maintain their equal elevations, how fast is the distance between them changing at 2.30 p.m.? Okay. More to that one than those last problems we did. Okay, so uh, this one we may need to draw a sketch. Okay, so the ones before wasn't necessary. This one, though, you might need to draw something to kind of get an idea of what's going on. So what you can do is draw what's going on. Okay, so an airliner passes over an airport at noon uh, going west. All right, so if this is the um, airport, west would be this way, okay? And then at 1 p.m., another airliner passes over the same airport due north. It's going this way, all right, okay? And then the distance between the two airplanes, so this, this, let this be X, this be Y. The distance between the airplanes would be that distance right there, correct? And also would notice if one plane is going due west and one due north, what's going on right here with this angle? Right, right, 90 degree. Okay. All right, got a picture. All right, can we get a formula from that for, with distance? Right triangle, Pythagorean theorem, okay? Right right there. Distance squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Okay? Take your formula. Alright. Now just lock the other ones. Take the derivative with respect to time of both sides. So derivative with respect to time of the left, derivative with respect to time of the right. Okay? So on the left. Uh, d squared, the derivative is 2d. They got to multiply by dt, d, 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 dt. Okay. On the right, I have a sum, so just take the derivative of the first plus the derivative of the second. So x squared, the derivative is 2x. I'm not differentiating with respect to x, though. I'm, in, in, I'm integrating with respect to t. So I've got to multiply by dx, dt. Plus y squared, the derivative is 2y. And then multiply by the derivative of y with respect to t. There is my formula. Okay? Okay, now, um, dx dt and dy dt. So let's identify what we know here. Um, so dx dt would be how fast the plane is moving in this direction with respect to time, right? The distance with respect to time. The one that's going west. How fast is the one that's going west? 500 miles per hour. So dx dt is 500 miles per hour. dy dt will be the, the rate of the plane going north. The rate of the one going north is how much? 550 miles per hour. Right, so I know that. Okay. Um, now, how do I get some more information here? Alright, well, it said that at an airliner passes over an airport at noon, traveling um, due west, and then at one, another airliner passes over the same airport at the same elevation, traveling due north at 550. All right. So we're looking at the time 2.30. All right. So uh, the one that passed over it at noon, which was X, right, this one, okay, um, if it's going 500 miles per hour, 
How many miles would he travel in one hour? 500. How many hours is it from noon to 2.30? Two and a half hours. So just take 500, multiply it by two and a half, that would be the distance X is traveled. Okay, does that make sense? Black okay. stairs? Yeah. Sorry. Right. So, 1,250 miles. Right. And then Y does not go, uh, does not go over the airport until 1 p.m. So how long is it from 1 p.m. to 2.30? An hour and a half, right? So 550 times an hour and a half would give me 825 hours. Okay. So I've got X, Y, okay, and I'm looking for how fast is the distance between them changing. So I'm looking for D, D, DT. So I still need to, get, need to know what D is right, at this particular time. How can I find D? got right triangle, I know X, I know Y, how do I find D? Pythagorean theorem. So let's do, let's say 1250 squared plus 825 squared equals D squared. Okay? So this will be 2243125 equals D squared. And then to find D, square root both sides, D is equal to the square root of 2, 2, 4, 3, 1, 2, 5, and I've got a decimal approximation for that of 4, 1, 4, 9, 7, 0. 7 miles. Okay. Are any questions up to that point? That's everything we need to know. This thing I need to plug it in, into our formula and find what D, D, DT change in that distance is. Okay. So we want to have 2 times D, which is 1, 4, 9, 7.7. 7. I'm going to leave the units off. I think. Equals 2 times X, so 2 times 1250 times the rate of change. Uh, the DX, DT, so that would be 500 plus um, y, or 2y, 825, times dy dt, which is 550. Okay. Any questions about that? Simple algebra now. This would be 2995.4. D, 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 T, and then on the right side, if I multiply this plus multiply that, I will get 2157500. Okay. Then divide, and I will find that D, A, D, T, or not D, A, D, 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 T, is around 720.27. And it should be miles per hour. Should be the units. Okay, it could be half. So as those planes go out um, at that particular time, which is 2.30, that distance is increasing at a rate of 720.27 miles per hour. Okay. All right, a rope passing through a capstan on a dock is attached to a boat offshore. The rope is pulled in at a constant rate of three feet per second, and the capstan is five feet vertically above the water. How fast is the boat traveling when it is 10 feet from the dock? Okay, so this is a picture of what's going on here. All right, so here is the dock. Here's the boat, 
And here is the uh, caps. All right, so pulling the rope, and that pulls the boat. Okay. Um, so what formula do we have for that? Right triangle, that right there, right? So let's let this be the distance. Let's, because if we're looking for, well, we're going to be looking for dx to d. We can let the variable too. I'm, I'll put it as d. Let that distance between the boat and the dock be x. Okay? Now, it did say a rope is passing through. The capstan is five feet vertically above the water. Okay? So I do know that this is this length is always the same. It's always going to be five. They pull that rope, that distance, and that boat comes in as you as you pull the rope. So um, my Pythagorean theorem, I would have x squared plus 5 squared equals d squared. Okay? Doesn't it say that the boat's 10 feet from the dock? I'm sorry, what? Doesn't it say that the boat's 10 feet from the dock? How fast is the boat track? Yeah, that's going to be t. That's going to be x. I mean. Yeah, so, so that's going to be that when I get the, the form. Okay? So we're looking at just for that instant when it's 10 feet. Oh, okay. But this, this length will never change. That's what it's going to be. I take the derivative of both sides with respect to t. Okay. Notice on the left, I've got a sum. Now, x squared is going to be 2x dx dt. What is the derivative of 5 squared? Zero. Right, it's just a constant. Uh, d squared will be 2d dd dt. Okay. Now, I want to know the how fast is the boat traveling when it is 10 feet from the dock. So, the boat is traveling this way, right? So I'm on this, the dx dt is what I'm looking for. Right. So I could just go ahead and divide this here. And then 2 divided by 2 would just be 1, so I would get d over x d d dt. So what do I need to know? Well, I know x, I'm looking for when x is 10, right? So I know 10 goes right there. Um, I know d, 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 dt is negative 3, right? It's, uh, it's pulled in at a constant rate of 3 feet per second. So I know that. So what else do I need to know then? D. 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 Right. So how can I find d? Here. So I got that five, and I'm looking at the instant when this is ten. So then I can tell the instant what what d is at that same instant. All right. So I can say five squared plus ten squared equals d squared. So that'd be twenty-five plus hundred is one twenty-five. Square root. Square root of twenty-five will be five times root twenty-five, which is five root. Well, that's the average. 25 times 5 is 125, so root 25 is 5. So that's what you do there. Okay. So when x is 10, d would be 5 root 5. Okay. So plug in this, plug in, this in. dx dt then would be d 5 root 5 over x, which is 10, times d, d dt and um, the, the change in the in the distance there, right, which it will be getting smaller, so it would be a negative three. Right. There you go. All right, so multiply that out. You get negative three root five over ten.
Now the negative part there okay, could have okay, well it's asking how fast is the boat traveling? Um, okay, how fast is the boat traveling when it is ten feet from the dock? So the rate is negative 3 root 5 over 10. I'd be fine with that or positive. But, but for the, when you do your homework in my math lab, you may want this as a positive, not a negative. Just, it's just asking for how fast is it going. Okay, so which is like speed, I guess, kind of. So speed is always positive. So um, I've got for the answer 3 root 5 over 10 feet per second. Okay. All right, so a piston is seated at the top of a cylindrical chamber with radius 5 when it starts moving into the chamber at a constant speed of 3 centimeters per second. Okay, so it's going down 3 centimeters per second. What is the rate of change of the volume of the cylinder when the piston is two centimeters from the base of the chamber. Okay. So what geometric figure do you really have here? Cylinder. A cylinder, all right. So a cylinder looks like this, right? So if I, so I'm looking, so what am I what I need to define as far as the cylinder goes? It tells you the change of the volume. The cylinder, right? Okay, what is the formula for a volume of a cylinder? Remember that one? Well, you've got a circle at the top with a radius, and then you've got a height here, right? So if you find the area of that circle and you multiply it times, however many times the height, that gives you the volume, right? So what is the area of the circle? R squared times the height, that's the volume. So volume is equal to uh, pi r squared h. There's your point. Okay. Alright, so let's see. So the radius on this one never changes. What is the radius on this cylinder? Five centimeters. So, and that, that's the same all the time. Just that piston's going going down, changes the volume, but the radius is always the same. So I can go ahead and just put that in. So five squared, that'd be 25, so the volume would be 25 pi times h would be the volume of this cell. Okay. All right, now with that, let's do the derivative of both sides with respect to time. So dv dt equals 25 pi dh dt. Okay. Alright, so piston, let's see. A cylindrical is a piston is seated at the top of the cylindrical chamber with radius five when it starts moving into the chamber at a constant speed of three centimeters per second. Right. So that piston is changing that height at a rate of three centimeters per second. Okay. So dH dt. And it's making that volume, it's decreasing the volume. That means the height, decreasing the height. So by negative three. So my units for the height, or for the change in the height, would be centimeters per second. Um, radius would be centimeters, but I'm squared it, right? So that would be 25 square centimeters. Okay? So the change in the volume, multiply, that would be negative 75 cubic centimeters per second. 
cubic centimeters per second, those units make sense because it is volume. So it should be cubic units. Okay. Looks like a cone, right, where your where water is coming out the bottom of it. Okay. So it says uh, an inverted conical water tank with a height of 12 feet and a radius of 6 feet is drained through a hole in the vertex at a rate of 2 cubic feet per second. What is the rate of change of the water depth when the water depth is 3 feet? Okay. So, what is the geometric shape we've got there? And we're talking about volume, right? So, so as that water goes out, that's that's the volume inside that cone that's being measured, right? So, how do you find the volume of a cone? Remember that one? Probably not, right? Similar to that one, to the the cylinder, except you multiply it by a third. So that would be your volume of a, of a cone, okay? Now, um, so let me draw a picture of this so we can kind of see what we're doing here. Um, so here's the cone. Right, we've got a radius of 6 at the top. And we've got a height here of 12, okay? Um, so if I just go anywhere else down here, I just in general do another triangle there. This can represent the radius at any time. And that can represent the height at any time. Okay, um, and those are would be similar triangles, all right? Because remember, with similar triangles, it has to be true with similar triangles. The angles are the same; the sides are proportional, right? So, if that's a right angle, whatever this angle here is, is going to be the same as this one, uh, because those lines are parallel, and that's a transversal. Those are um, corresponding angles, which means this in this angle is definitely the same as the other because it's the same. So they're similar triangles. So that means 6 over 12 would be equal to R over H. Okay, it's proportion. Okay. Now, what am I wanting to know here? I need to, I need to just have this formula in terms of the height, okay, because that's what I am looking for is the change in the height at a certain point, okay? So, if I cross multiply here, I get 6H equals 12R, and if I divide by 6, then I will see that the height is always 2 times the radius, okay? So the height, so wherever the, wherever the height is, the height is always 2 times the radius. So now I can go back up here then, and, well, I'm sorry, that is true, but I don't, I need to put something for R, not H. So if I divide it the other way, sorry about that, let's back up here. Divide by 12, what also be true then is that R is equal to the height divided by 2, half of the height. Okay, that would be more helpful because I'm wanting my formula to just have the height. So let's put this in the place of R here. So I will have V equals one third pi H over two squared times H. So now just a little bit of fix, fixing it up a bit. All right, so we got one third, that would be over four. So that would be one twelfth. Um, so let's say pi over 12 and then h to the third power. Okay, that's a pretty good point. Okay. 
now that we figured that out, so now we now all we need is just we've got H and B, good formula now to figure out what it's at, whatever it's asking. So let's take the derivative with respect to time of both sides. V D T equals so that would be a three times pi over twelve would be pi over four. H squared D H D T. Okay. The formula. Okay. All right. So uh, go back to the question. Inverted uh, conical water tank with a height of twelve raised to six. Right. Already got that. Uh, through a hole in the vertex, it's drained the hole in the vertex at a rate of two cubic feet per second. Where do I put in two cubic feet per second? That's how fast the water's leaving the tank. What does that affect? That's the volume, right? Because all that water's going out, so that volume is going, it's measuring the volume there. So, and it's going out, it's going to be getting smaller, so I'm going to put negative two cubic feet per second. Okay? Pi over four H. Alright? What is the rate of change of the water depth when the water depth is three feet? So when the water height is three feet. So put three feet right there. And that's going to tell me the rate of the, that the height is changing at that particular time. Okay. Any questions about setting that up? All right, so let's see. Um, notice of my units. I've got feet cubed over here. Here I've got feet squared. So if I divide feet cubed by feet squared, I have what? Feet per second, which the height is just length. Right, so that should make sense. So I'm going to have dH dt. So I got feet per second. Okay. Two. Now that'll be three squared is nine. So nine pi over four. Two divided by nine pi over four. Eight over nine pi. And it's negative because of that. So negative eight over nine pi feet per second. So the depth of the water is decreasing at a rate, and again, I've got this one as positive, but it's eight over nine pi feet per second. Okay. A five foot tall woman walks at eight feet per second toward a street light that is 20 feet above the ground. What is the rate of change of the length of her shadow when she is 15 feet from the street light? At what rate is the tip of her shadow moving? Okay. So, right, so let's draw a picture of what is going on. All right, so we have, this is what's happening here. All right, you got a five foot woman somewhere about here. And this should be taller than that, but anyway. But then you've got a 20-foot street light. Okay. And if, if the street light's going this way, um, this would be your shadow over here. So this would be the uh, shadow length. We'll call y the distance the woman is from the street light. What's it called? X. Okay. And then this would be the tip of her shadow. Okay? Alright, so um, again I have similar triangles here. Okay? Because that those are both right angles. They definitely share the same angle there. These are parallel, so these two are corresponding would be the same as well. So I can definitely can set up a proportion there and solve to get some sort of a relationship between the two. Um, so let's do that. All right, so uh, I can say x plus y over 20 should equal y over 5. And that's 
that's just some basic geometry there with similar triangles. Okay. Sides are proportional when the angles are the same. Questions about that? Okay. Now you can simplify that equation a bit. Um, cross multiply. I get 5x plus 5y equals 20y. Subtract 5. 5x equals 15y. Divide by y. By 5 I mean x is equal to 3y. Okay. There's a good formula that relates the, her distance from the street light and the length of her shadow. So her, her uh, distance from the street light is three times the distance of the shadow. Okay? So now take the derivative with respect to time of both sides. All right, so I will get dx dt equals three dy dt. So the question is, um, first question, what is the rate of change of the length of her shadow when she is 15 feet uh, from the street lines? place to put that in there in the, in the equation? What is the distance from the street light? X. X? Is there an X in there anywhere? Now, so what does that mean about the change in the shadow? It's constant everywhere. There's nowhere to put it. You can't put X in. So if you just take the um, negative 8 feet per second is how x is changing and then divide dy dt is equal to negative eight thirds feet per second. So what is the rate of change of the length of her shadow when she is 15 feet from the street light? It's the same all the time. It's negative 8 thirds feet per second. Okay? Now, last thing. At what rate is the tip of her shadow moving? Okay? Well, the tip of her shadow all right, would be here. All right, so what rate is it moving? Well, it would be the rate of the distance plus the rate of the shadow. Okay, so if you want to know uh, the distance that her shadow, the, the, the uh, rate with, with which the tip of her shadow is moving, just take dy dt and add to that dx dt. So this would be negative 8 thirds feet per second plus negative 8 feet per second and that would add up to be negative 32 thirds feet per second. Okay. That would be how fast the uh, tip would be changing. Right. Any questions about that? Right. That is all of those.